Hi everyone, welcome to part five of our Fiji tutorial series. Today we're going to focus on image registration using a plugin called StackRegJ. But before we get started, we need to make sure that StackRegJ is functional because it has a dependency. It depends on an update site called update site called Big EPFL. So in the first video in this series, I showed you how to add update sites to Fiji. So go through that video, add big EPFL to an update site, restart Fiji, and then follow along from here. So we have two different data sets that will show us um, multiple ways in which you can use StackRegJ to um, register the images in your movie. So the first one we're going to use has a fluorescence channel and a transmitted light channel, and you can register on either of the channels. So when you run StackRegJ, make sure you've selected the channel that you actually want to register on. And as we watch over time, we can see that we get some drift of this fluorescence and it also bleaches a little bit and goes out of focus. So we're gonna see how much of that we can fix. So I'm gonna click on the Fiji bar, type the letter L, and that will bring up my search window in the same ways that we've done before. And I'm gonna search here for StackRegJ, okay? So in the first instance, I'm gonna focus on the fluorescence channel and I can tell that because of the green here. Um, so, and I'm gonna align everything to the first frame of this movie. So I'm gonna select the StackRegJ plugin here. I'm gonna select the window that I want to register and I'm gonna go ahead and click run here. So it brings up this window and gives you a couple of options. Um, I'm gonna show you the drop down. Translation is the simplest uh, registration algorithm and it does not alter your data in any way. Everything from here, rigid body and on, will start to alter your data in some way. So if you want to maintain um, image intensity and be certain of what the intensity is over time, I always stick with translation. And for most things, translation will work well as the registration method. So select translation and then I like to unselect the rest of these options because I don't have a secondary image. Um, but what this will do is the translation trajectory will output a plot window in which you can then align a secondary movie using a different plugin. Um, so we're going to leave these off for now and then maybe in a later video we can show those uh, methods. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and the Fiji bar up here will show you what frame it's registering on. And since this image is a 512 by 512 image, it's going to take just a couple seconds. We're almost finished. And then you'll notice that this window is now rewritten with the registered movie. So if I go ahead and play through the movie here, you can see that the drift that we had before is largely completely eliminated um, with this method. So that worked really, really well. Okay, and you'll notice that the transmitted light was registered along with it. If I had started with the transmitted light, it registers on bright objects. So these bubbles that are in the media would have caused major issues if I had used the transmitted light, but it does register both channels at the same time. I wanted to show one other example um, of where this can also be handy. This image is a bunch of different cells that have their telomeres marked and it has some bleaching. Um, but we can see that there's um, a red and a green channel. So right now I'm on the green channel. If I were to focus on red and run this plugin, I'd get basically no translation of the image because the nuclei largely stay in the same spot they are throughout the movie. And that's not really what I want to do. I want to align one single telomere spot over time. So what I'm going to do is select my um, rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle around a cell and then I'm going to duplicate that ROI into a new window by clicking on image, duplicate, and I'll give it a new name. And I want to duplicate the whole hyperstack, red and green channels in all time frames. So now I have this little window, which is the same scale and the same intensity as it was before. And if I play through this movie now, you see how much the telomere wanders around. Okay. So what I'm going to do is select the first channel that's green. I'm going to run StackRegJ. I'm going to change back to translation and I will not show the output trajectory and I'm going to click OK and it's going to run through ran through really fast because there's so few pixels in this movie. And now if I play through this movie, you notice that the telomere spot stays almost perfectly um, 
at the same position throughout the whole movie. Um, if I had done the opposite, you notice that the nucleus kind of wiggles around now because it's keeping both channels together and it's uh, changing the position of them. So the red now wanders around where in the original data, the green wandered around. Okay, so this is um, this has been a tutorial for StackRegJ and um, make sure that you go through and give credit to Big EPFL if you use StackRegJ because it is dependent upon Big EPFL. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.